Hey everybody, welcome back to Custom Cards. Um, today we're going to be opening up another pack of cards and um, going through them, talking about the design of each one, and then at the end we're going to design a card for our Norse set based on, or, or rather inspired by, the cards that we find in this pack. Today we're doing Ravnica Allegiance, which is um, one of the better Ravnica sets in my opinion. I'm honestly not too big on Ravnica because while I like the color pair idea, um, I really think that only having five color pairs in a set restricts limited far too much, and if one of those color pairs is just bad, um, the whole format really kind of sucks to, to draft. Um, so Ravnica is not my favorite, but Ravnica Allegiance was kind of cool because it had a lot of good like build around cards um, that you were able to build unique decks. Um, without having to just play um, Azorius or Rakdos or whatever. Like, Azorius has High Alert and um, Dovin's Acuity, I think, um, which were two very good build-around uncommons um, that you didn't necessarily need to um, have all the best Azorius cards as long as you had the cards that went in that deck. So, um, with, without further ado, let's get into it. All right. Prowling Caracal. Car Car Caracal. Car Look, they've been using this word a lot more recently, and it's frustrating because I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, aside from that, it is a 3-1 for 2. It's it's a vanilla creature. There's not much to say about this. Um, I mean, I guess I could say that the first 3-1 for 1 and a white vanilla creature was in Future Sight. It was Future Shifted because they hadn't actually done it yet at the time. They haven't um, reprinted or pre-printed that card, as it were, but... Uh, eh. Humungulus. <laughs> this uh, probably wins the award for one of my favorite names uh, on any magic card. Um, so it's a 2-5 hexproof for 5, which is... Um, eh. the, the stat line is not good. But giving it hexproof means that it's kind of an impenetrable wall that can also attack if you need it to. So um, this is a pretty decent card. Um, next up we have Rampage, Rampaging Rendhorn. 4-4 four, four, Riot for 5. Um, so that means that this can either be a 5-5 five, five for 5 or a 4-4 four, four, Haste for 5. Um, either of those options are actually pretty decent, which made this a uh, you know, good card. Consent to the Pit is removal, and that's that's all I can really say say in its favor. Um, it is six mana to destroy any creature. Destroying any creature is good, but at sorcery speed, at six mana, that's that's really rough for a card. So um, it does also deal two damage to the creature's controller, which I guess is fine in an aggro deck, but in an aggro deck, you don't really want to be playing six drop removal spells. So this card is basically a last pick removal um if if that's the only removal that you can get then uh well that's fine not a good card gateway plaza so yeah this this is a decent um very simple mana fixing land it can tap for any color of mana but it has two downsides enters tapped and you have to pay one uh, when it comes in or else it dies so um very decent land you'll play it if you need fixing don't if you don't Applied Biomancy. It is an instant for green-blue. Choose one or both. Target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Return target creature to its owner's hand. I felt like I never really had a good place to use this. And it's weird, because it seems like this is such a versatile card. Because, like, returning a creature to its owner's hand is pretty good. Um, two mana with upside is usually, you know, decent rate. Um, giving a creature plus one plus one at instant speed can make it win a combat. So you could like bounce a creature that's going to kill one of yours and also then make one of your other creatures win combat. It just didn't come up that often. And then this only became like one of the modes was useful. And then it's not really worth it for the mana you're spending. So eh, in practice, I didn't think this card was as good as it looked. We have Root Snare, um, which is an amazing card. Um, no, for, for those of you who don't know, I, I love, uh, fog effects. Um, I once won a game day with a turbo fog deck that I'm sure was extremely annoying to play against, but it was a lot of fun. Um, that said, fog effects are not really good and limited. They are extremely powerful. They're very powerful effects. Don't get me wrong. But, 
um, you're tra what you're trading for that power is having a card in your hand that potentially does nothing. Um, it is very situationally useful. And that means that it's not necessarily worth including in your deck. Um, so I often don't run Fogs Unlimited, um, but man, ugh, I still love it. All right, Azorius Locket. Um, it's a it's a mana stone. <laughs> it taps for white or blue. Um, Ravnica has a long storied tradition of um, having a, a mana rock for each uh, guild, and the lockets are pretty pretty good ones, I think. Um, they're a bit better than the clue stones because it draws you two cards instead of one, um, which is which is a big difference. So like early in the game, this ramps you, and then late in the game, you can trade it in to get back not just the one card you put into it, but an additional card as well. So these were, I think, a lot better, a lot better than the clue stones, and um, yeah, just just decent. Okay, Syndicate Messenger. Now we're getting into um, I don't know. So it's a 2-3 flying for 4, which is like slightly below rate, I'd say. Maybe even on rate. But um, it does, when it dies, it gives you a 1-1. One, one. So like on its own, it's unexciting. But when it dies, you get another creature. So um, that makes this card yeah, pretty decent. Um, especially, of course, in the Orzhov decks where you can take advantage of the tokens and, and even this creature by sacrificing them for various effects. Clear the mind. Um... Two and a blue sorcery for target player shuffles their graveyard into their library and draw a card. Now, my friend Alex was very high on this card. Uh, um, he always would try and draft exactly two, and then you um, you basically never run out of your, your library. Um, so you play some kind of like blue-white um, deck that is able to draw a bunch of cards and just remove your opponent's threats and just very controlling and then you can just keep playing through your library with this. I never saw him make it work and I was never able to make it work but I hear tell that was a pretty decent deck in the format so um, it's interesting because this is a this is an effect that is generally not a good card um, so it's interesting um, that in this format it was like kind of a kind of a higher pickup Bankrupt in Blood. One and a black for sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice two creatures. Draw three cards. Okay, so this is... Um, this goes in the sort of same deck as Syndicate Messenger. Um, it lets you draw three cards, but you have to sacrifice two creatures. Um, so you're trading evenly, assuming that you're sacrificing real creatures. Um, so if you have two real creatures, you're spending these two and this card to draw three new cards. And so you're just getting back three more cards, which aren't guaranteed to be useful, which eh, makes this card intrinsically kind of bad. So what you want to do is you want to abuse the ability by sacrificing creatures that are not quote unquote real. And um, that would be token creatures. So this could be decent in a, in a good afterlife deck um, where you have uh, some of the creatures that have afterlife too. Um, so that you just have uh, something to sacrifice and basically turn them into new cards. Cause like, there's that 2-1 for 3 that has Afterlife 2, so you, you just get aggressive with that, trade it off, get two tokens, and then boom, suddenly this is a draw 3 spell for 2 mana, which gets very good. So, again, I did not play much Ravnica Allegiance, and so I did not ever make this card work, but it seems like it could be pretty good for an Aristocrat-style deck. Next up, we have Code of Constraint. Now, this is a card I did play. Um... When I did play the set, I played a lot of Azorius and Simic, and this card goes in both. Um, so it gives a creature minus four, minus zero till end of turn, draw a card. Okay, it's Befuddle, um, which is a fine card, but you also have Addendum, which is if you cast it during your main phase, so if you skip out on the instant ability, um, you tap that creature and it doesn't tap, untap during its controller's next untap step. So, um, Instead of just beating a creature in combat, you can tap it down uh, for an entire turn cycle so it can't attack or block. Um, which is, uh, this is a pretty decent card. Uh, it is not quite as good as the other addendum blue removal uncommon, but <laughs> still decent. Ooh, more Simic. Combine Guild Mage. Um, so another thing that all Ravnica blocks have is 
a cycle of guild mages, um, which are two mana two twos, one in each color pair, and that have two abilities. This one is two two for green and blue, of course. It has one and a green tap. This creature, <clears throat> sorry, this turn, each creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Okay, so that's decent. It can give you plus one plus one counters, although it costs two mana, so I feel like you're only going to be playing one creature after it in a turn anyway. So effectively, this is two mana for probably one counter, which can be fine, especially in a long drawn out game. Or one in a blue tap to move a plus one plus one counter from target creature you control onto another target creature you control. So the first ability is restricted. Um, you have to put it on the creature that you play next. Uh, well, on each, each creature that you play this turn will get a plus one plus one counter. But if you want to stack them all up on one creature, boom, that's what the second ability is for. Um, I feel like this is a pretty decent guild mage. Um, it is slow. It is very slow. But... It gives you a lot of late game value, which, as we all know, is what Simic is about. And our rare is Electro Dominance. Oh boy, this is um, this was making waves in uh, in modern for uh, its ability to play the the no mana cost um, suspend spells. Um, so it's X red red for an instant that deals X damage to any target. Okay. And then you may cast a card with a converted mana cost X or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So, um, you know, the idea of this is you spend six mana to, you know, play a, a four, ma uh, four damage burn spell, but then you also get to play a four mana spell. So it's, it's basically not taking up your mana for the turn. It's also, it's, uh, even without that ability, it's a Volcanic Geyser, which is a decent card in Limited. So this is pretty, pretty solid. I don't feel like the, the last ability of getting able to play another card is like vital in this format. But um, it's a nice little bonus, and like I said, in older formats like Modern. And then, of course, um, we got a Guildgate, um, which is, is just a, a land for one of the guilds. Um, enters tapped. And we got a Spirit Token for our, um, for our Afterlife deck. So I'm seeing a lot of... Uh, we talked a bit about the Afterlife stuff and the Sacrifice synergies. So let's design a card um, that sort of has the same idea that would... You know what? This set is a build-around set. Um, like I said, I enjoy it more than other Ravnica sets because it has some good build-around cards. Um, we didn't find any here except for, like, maybe Clear the Mind. But um, let's make a build-around card for a Sacrifice deck. Okay, Sacrifice decks need three things. Creatures to sacrifice, ways to sacrifice them, and payoffs for doing so. Sometimes these things overlap on the same card. Let's make this an enchantment that gives you a way to sacrifice your creatures. Ooh, how about you can sacrifice a creature to power up your draws? Something like, whenever you would draw a card, you may sacrifice a creature. If you do, instead look at the top three cards of your library, put one into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. This will help you find and balance the different components of your deck. Now, sacrifice creatures to draw cards better is very black, so let's make this cost one black, give it some flavor, and we're good to go. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and tell us in the comments what videos you'd like to see in the future.